After Prince of Persia The Sands of Time turned into one of the biggest hits of its generation, Ubisoft wanted another masterpiece for the next generation of consoles. So they tasked Sands of Time director Patrice Desolais with making them a game with a brand new HD engine. But as his new project developed, he realized his Prince of Persia title was becoming too gritty and realistic for that series. And so, a new franchise was born, Assassin's Creed. Even though the finished product released to mixed reviews, the title became the fastest selling new IP in US history. Ubisoft knew they had a hit on their hands. However, though the game had garnered a cult following, large numbers of gamers hated its repetitive missions. There was a fear that despite good initial sales, the bad word of mouth would kill any future release in the series. But as 2009 rolled around, Ubisoft ignored the naysayers and announced a blitz of Assassin's Creed games that would release all on the same day. They were betting the farm that Assassin's Creed 2 could reverse all the bad buzz and give their series a badly needed renaissance. November 17, 2009 would see the release of three Assassin's Creed games that, all combined, would come out on basically every gaming platform that existed. Assassin's Creed Bloodlines for the PSP, Assassin's Creed 2 Discovery for the DS and iPhone, and Assassin's Creed 2 for the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and later the PC. Only the Wii would be spared assassination. Assassin's Creed Bloodlines on the PSP would stick with the first game's hero, Altair, in the Third Crusade. It was meant as a treat for hardcore fans to finish out their original experience before moving on to the new main game. It would also reward the Sony faithful, since those who bought both Bloodlines and Assassin's Creed 2 for the PS3 would get extra weapons in both games. Sadly, the game received only mediocre reviews, taking much of the same criticism as its predecessor, that its beautiful visuals were largely offset by its repetitive gameplay. But at the end of the day, the hype leading up to November wasn't built around the portable title. The big game that everyone was watching was Assassin's Creed 2. The first game had been a huge gamble that hadn't fully paid off. Audiences were split in their reactions and many of them had no intention of buying another game of repetitive missions. If Patrice Desilets and his team couldn't create a sequel that dramatically improved upon its predecessor, their series could be scrapped. Worse, it might prove to publishers that daring original ideas couldn't sell. To make matters more complex, while they had had nearly four years to make the first Assassin's Creed, they'd have only half that time for the sequel. Fortunately, Ubisoft Montreal tripled the size of the development team, making it one of the largest crews ever put on a single game. But that still wasn't big enough for Ubisoft. Their plans for the franchise were so large that they couldn't be contained in one medium. In 2008, the publisher had acquired Hybrid Technologies, a visual effects studio that specialized in compositing live actors into virtual spaces. There was only one reason for a video game company to buy such a studio. To make films based on their intellectual properties. Ubisoft foresaw that cinema and gaming would be converging, and soon. And so, Hybrid was tasked with making a film around the upcoming blockbuster. The result was Assassin's Creed Lineage, a short film released in three parts on the web. The story was a setup to the events of Assassin's Creed 2 and featured the same actors as the game. Since it was distributed for free, in some ways it could be viewed as the most expensive ad ever made for a game. Considering the quality of the result, don't be surprised to see more from Hybrid soon. Even with such a marketing push behind it, the title would have to contend with some of the year's biggest releases. Just like the first game, Assassin's Creed 2 would be debuting in the same window as a Halo, a Call of Duty, and a Mass Effect. Could the historical game break out amidst all the future and modern warfare? Once again, Assassin's Creed beat the odds and made a killing. In its first week alone, it sold 1.6 million units, on its way to 6 million units across the entire holiday season. Commercially, they'd done it. Critically, journalists everywhere were stunned to find that nearly every negative aspect of the previous game had been ditched, and every positive aspect had been improved and refined. The result was a taut, fun, and focused game with some much-needed variety in its missions. The response to this trip through the Animus was unanimous. It was stellar. The story, too, was dramatically different this time around. 
The ancestor we follow this time is Ezio Auditore, right from his birth. Unlike the first game, the player would follow Ezio throughout his entire life, from callow youth to grizzled veteran. And during his adventures through a lovingly recreated Renaissance Italy, he would encounter some of the legends of the era, including Niccolo Machiavelli, Rodrigo Borgia, and a young Leonardo da Vinci. The Renaissance, almost never visited in gaming, made for a perfect setting with its vibrant colors and even more colorful characters. The title even dared to be educational, taking time out to explain the history of its most famous buildings. However, for better or worse, the tone of the story changed quite a bit from the first game. Where the first Creed had been a philosophical examination of violence and peace, the second game was more of a fun conspiracy story. All put together, it was a top-to-bottom fantastic package that has put Assassin's Creed at the center of Ubisoft's catalog. There were no more questions about the future of the franchise. But that didn't mean there weren't surprises. Ubisoft announced that they would be following the Activision model of yearly releases for their top franchises, which meant that they wanted another Assassin's Creed by November 2010. And what was more, they wanted multiplayer. With such a quick turnaround time and change to the game's nature, questions emerged as to whether Ubisoft was just kicking a cheap sequel out the door. But the franchise's creator and director, Patrice Desilet, only had good things to say about the title. In interviews, he seemed genuinely excited about telling the story of an older Ezio becoming an assassin leader in Rome. So long as the genius behind the franchise was engaged, there was a good chance that Assassin's Creed Brotherhood would be another success. Which was why his sudden departure from Ubisoft Montreal in June of 2010 was such a shock to the industry. Officially, Ubisoft has stated that Desilet wanted a creative break from the industry. However, considering the overnight nature of his departure, it is widely believed that something else must have happened. But nothing is known for sure. If in fact he is leaving the gaming industry, it is a blow to gamers worldwide, as they will have lost one of the great auteurs of the medium. For certain, Ubisoft will be making more Assassin's Creed games, with or without Desilet. They have already announced Assassin's Creed Lost Legacy for the Nintendo 3DS, and it is assumed that Assassin's Creed 3 will release in November 2011. Whether or not the franchise can continue its popularity remains to be seen. Though it rose to the top in only two years, staying there will be another matter. But then again, it's never a good idea to underestimate an assassin.